Grace and peace, everybody. Welcome to part three of our five part series as we take a look in Sabbath School Study Group at Living the Advent Hope. And today we're going to talk about Judgment Hope. It's really the other side of what we focused on in part two. So if you haven't watched that, take the time to to watch that. But if not, either way, let's pray today, because in this study, Father, we want to understand the value and the peace that comes from knowing that we have hope in judgment, even in your advent. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. We talked about how Advent hope is hope in the resurrection, but today we're focusing on how Advent hope hopes in justice as well. This is, again, another blessing that comes from looking forward to Jesus coming back. And one of the things that he comes back with and as is as judge See, the Bible and the father, more importantly, knows how it feels to live in the life that we live. Solomon shared this, the struggle that we face in Ecclesiastes chapter 8, 14, the injustice that happens in the world to the just, where he says, there's a vanity which is done upon the earth, that there be just men, good people, unto whom it happeneth according to the work of the wicked. In other words, bad things happening to good people. And then on top of that, again, there be wicked men to whom it happeneth according to the work of the righteous. In other words, good things happening to bad people. Solomon says, and, and, and I echo, I said this also is vanity. This is the fruit of a messed up world, but it's not going to be forever. See, when Jesus comes, all that is wrong will be made right. And when he comes, he comes not just as the reaper, as the redeemer, but he also comes as ultimate righteousness, meaning justice to make what is wrong right. See, that's why for us, Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13 says, for the just, those who are trying to do the right thing, let's hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. In other words, do the right thing. Do the right thing because this is the whole duty. This is our responsibility as men and women. That's our whole duty. Just do the right thing. Do what is right, even when justice is void, even when good is returned with evil, and even when evil is rewarded, when people cheat and they get ahead, when people lie and they're promoted, when people are falling, but they seem to go higher and higher even though they're failing in character, the Bible says do the right thing because verse 14, for God shall bring every work into judgment. It did not say every good work. It said every work. It did not just say every bad work. It says every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. See, when Jesus comes back, he's been keeping perfect score. And as the perfect scorekeeper, he's able to render judgment to all. To so those who've done right, they rise, even the Bible says, those who've died in Christ to the resurrection of reward. But we didn't answer this question in the previous study. Well, what about those who didn't die in Jesus and, and Jesus comes back? Well, the Bible says that they continue to rest in the grave with the exception of a few. Jesus prophesied that when he returned, that there will be a few who will be raised from the grave. Those who were literally there physically at his persecution. He said, you will see me coming in the clouds of glory. They will be raised up only to go back to sleep thereafter because they will be destroyed by the brightness of his coming. And all of those who sleep, who have not accepted Christ, await what Jesus calls the second resurrection. This is the resurrection of damnation that's mentioned in the book of Revelation. And so everybody gets what they deserve. But the thing that's so amazing that in Christ, the righteous get what they don't deserve. That's what's so crazy about grace. The wicked get what they deserve. But those who trusted in Jesus, who could have done things worse than those who did not trust in Jesus, get what they don't deserve. And that's everlasting life. This is the kind of justice that we can rest in. This is the kind of justice that, no, we don't sit and, 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 and let people be oppressed. No, we don't sit and let good things uh, happen to bad and, and bad things happen to good. But ultimately, even though we are civic minded, the idea of civil justice and what Jesus did when he walked the earth, he didn't establish a government here to try and take over the Romans. In fact, that's exactly what the disciples and the people wanted him to do. What he wanted them to do was to put their eyes on the kingdom to come. 
and their vision on the kingdom to come would judge how they lived in the kingdom where they stood, where they would be Christians, but Christians recognizing this is not my home. Heaven is, but I will not be so heavenly minded that I won't be of any earthly good. I want to encourage us to remember that one of the joys of Jesus coming back is that he keeps perfect score. He knows where you've been slighted. just like he knows where we've slighted others. So be focused on what you can control. And that is to fear God, keep his commandments and trust that he will judge every work, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Hey, if you enjoyed today's lesson in prophecy, be sure to visit our website, changeministry.org slash the highway home. Here you're going to find two visual studies that guide you through every prophetic event from now until the coming of Christ. And you'll even find a step by step study that goes deeper into the word of God so that you can find both the peace and the power that comes from the promise of Jesus's return.